This is One on One. We are at the uh, Seton Hall Hackensack Meridian School of Medicine, and we're here talking with a friend who we've talked to many times. He is Dr. Jeff, uh, Jeffrey Boskamp, who is the Senior Vice President, Co-Chief Academic Officer, Hackensack Meridian Health, and also the Associate Dean uh, here at the Medical School. Um, doctor, we have talked many times on the air and offline about medical education, about the changing paradigm of medical education. Talk to us about what you envision here and frankly, the bigger picture of medical education. So I think the whole landscape is changing. I mean, medical education has to keep up with the times. We don't actually know where it's gonna go. Our first students are gonna enter in 2018. So trying to get them to memorize facts that are good today are gonna be outdated, way outdated by then. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna teach them to problem solve, to become lifelong learners. We're gonna have them get the skills they need to continue to learn throughout their career and keep up with these humongous changes. What does emotional intelligence have to do with clinical excellence? Well, I think it's, it's everything. I mean, basically, you know, we're gonna have a group of doctors that can relate to patients, that can uh, have empathy with patients, and uh, it's, it's a tif totally different way of looking at it. For example? They have, they have to relate to the community. So all of us are looking at not just hospitals and traditional places where healthcare is given. We're focused on wellness, and wellness doesn't happen at hospitals. It happens out in the community. We want our students to be out there in the community, interacting, having people, engaging people before illness occurs. Doc, let me push you a little bit on this. A concrete example. I mean, you and I have talked about, talk about communication a lot. As a student of it, as a teacher of it, I often think, how do you teach communication? How do you teach people to be more empathetic? In a medical school, how do you actually do that? Well, that's the challenge, and it's something we're up for. You know, traditional medical schools haven't taught that. Um, so I think there's a couple parts to that, Steve. I think one is you have to do a really good selection process in the beginning. You so who the students are? Before, before they're your students, you, when you do interviews and you decide who's going to make up your class, you have to look for people that have the seeds of empathy that you can develop. For some people, that's not a skill they have and it would be very hard to develop it. But once you've got people who can do this and you think you see it in them, then you can develop it by a much different type of curriculum where you have them in the community interacting with people, understanding what people go through, what the difficulties are. Not just prescribing a med, but understanding the difficulty of whether they're actually going to be able to afford it, whether they could pick it up, um, to relate to them, and not just ask the medical questions, but to ask the broad questions that are going to lead to them having an improved outcome. Since you've been practicing what you are preaching right now for a long time, question becomes, explain to folks and, and people who have been on the other end of this, you know this as patients, as family members, how does the patient and how does the patient's family actually benefit from the kind of the practice of medicine that you're actually describing? So, you know, it's not just like how they benefit, it's how they participate. And that's the change, right? It's not a doctor telling you what to do. We used to say, we used to ask if patients were compliant with what you tell them to do. We're changing all that. The words matter. So it's that team, so that it's the entire family that works with the doctor for an outcome. Um, so that you don't just tell people what to do, you listen. And that listening, Steve, I know you've emphasized forever, is something that is very different than just telling people what to do, to understand what they need and then to help them achieve it. And let's do this, and we'll talk to the dean about this as well. The kind of the faculty that will be here teaching this empathy, teaching the listening skills, teaching the well-rounded physicians of the future. Well, we're excited about the faculty that we're putting together, and uh, and it's coming together very, very well. But. You know, on the other hand, not everybody does this incredibly well. And that whole communication skill that, you know, that, that you've taught and that a number of us have embraced, that's going to have to be taught to all the faculty too. So faculty development, actually getting our faculty to the point where they can impart this knowledge in an effective way is another key part of putting this school together. This is groundbreaking. It is groundbreaking. It's completely different. And only in a new school can you be this groundbreaking. Why? Because you have an existing medical school, 
good luck trying to turn around that aircraft carrier, right? We have, we're designing it from the beginning to be what we want it to be, and that's gonna make all the difference because we can go in the precise direction. We can get the kind of people and students that we want that are gonna be the future doctors. So when you were in medical school, go back a couple of years, uh -huh. and, and imagine that time. Imagine how you were trained, and think about what's about to happen here in July of 2018. How much different? Completely different. I mean, just a completely different paradigm. The old days of sitting in lectures and having, uh, being spoon-fed with knowledge uh, that then becomes outdated is gone. This is gonna be students working together collaboratively in teams and bringing in nurses, bringing in allied health people and working in a team the way that they're gonna work when they graduate and being able to attack this huge body of knowledge now and know how to get it, know how to analyze it critically um, and problem solve with it. That's, those are the skills that, that lead to lifelong learning and becoming a, and being a great doctor over time. Of course, with that empathy and the ability to relate to patients. Before I let you go, doctor, real quick, you're talking about nurses, doctors, allied health professionals. Why is that so important that they are all learning here at a school of medicine together as opposed to, okay, there's a school of nursing somewhere else, there's an allied health professionals building somewhere else. Why, why being together? Why does that matter so much? So we've worked with the architects on this building very carefully. They're in this building, the health science campus, there is not an area for the medical school, an area for nursing, an area for health and medical science. Everything's mixed. Why? Because medicine is, and healthcare is a team sport now. And if you're going to work together later, you better understand what everybody else is learning, what their skills, what their talents are, how everybody can use each other and to get the result we want to achieve. And that's going to start here at the very first day of med school. Thank you, doctor. Thanks, Steve. Great to see you. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Investors Bank, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Johnson & Johnson, New Jersey Resources, New Jersey Sharing Network, Fedway Associates, and by Gary's Wine and Marketplace. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One on One with Steve Adubato has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.